Ryan, how's your trip been? So so. So boy. <laughs> so boy. <laughs> so today, guys, obviously we've had an amazing trip again. We've got a uh, Obviously, because I'm here, not you. Obviously. Obviously. The, only, the only thing that could make this trip even better was if Kevin was tagging along with us. But apart from that, we've had Rob to fill in the gap, which he's done a very good job, to be honest. He's an animal on the karaoke machine, right? <laughs> He's the instigator. He is the instigator. Yeah. But we're on our way back now to Tokyo. We've actually got almost... A day to ourselves. A day to ourselves in Tokyo. So why don't they come to Tokyo with us? Why not? Ooh. Rob, how's your trip been? Oh, awesome. I'm not ready for that. What's that? Oh, I wasn't ready for that question, Christ. I know, it's a long one. We'll go back to you at the end of this video so you can gather your thoughts. But, you know, uh, listen, me and Ryan go to Tokyo for the day. Do you want to come? I'm on it. I'm with you to Tokyo, mate. Let's nice. Go. Let's okay. go. Uh, how spectacular Ryan's suitcase is. Look, we've got Omas, Gatters, Gucci's. Oh, that's a new one from I'm not yesterday, sure isn't it? I'm not sure about this one here. That is the thing. That is the spec. That's the cherry on the cake. <clears throat> oh, that is spectacular, isn't it? Oh my God, you've done well there. A bit of breakfast in the old French cuisine place. Cinnamon swirl, mm, hot doggy thing, and the sandwich of kings. Look at that. That's who she's going for. I don't know what looks like a vagina. Colorado blue cheese. Oh, there we are. This is Rob's selection. Those are awesome, like curry cheese puffs. Ryan Scent is going for chocolate croissant. Chocolate croissant. So it's got some sort of hot butter. Something with a. So, Ryan loves to start the day with a bit of meat in him. We get a little drink. We're just waiting for the Shinkansen to get to Tokyo. Three hours, but I've got some documentaries to watch. Oh, we're on the train. Oh, look at that. Oh, hello. Look at that. Gorgeous, guys. Might do a bit of scenery on the way. Little snippets of the most spectacular things. If I don't fall asleep. Tokyo Station, he's still here, and so is he. Right, if you want a day out in Tokyo, all you've got to do is get one of these, put your stuff in, press that, and put a thousand yen in there. Bosh. There we are. Press your yen. Honestly, I have to teach these guys how to do this. I ain't too much of a mong, am I? Yes. So sick, we just found an ADA stand. I have one. Amazing. So this stuff is all aquascaping stuff, but it's from a brand from oh, Japan. Okay. It is unreal. Oh. It's awesome. <laughs> this is proper. Oh, this has actually made my day seeing this. I wonder how much the canister filters are. Look at that. So cool. It's awesome, isn't it? Little oh, workshops. Yeah, little <laughs> workshops. This is the stuff I buy from that old man shop. Wow. Narushin Toy Farm's favourite uh, shop. Popped up to have lunch. I mean, there's no reason we came here at all. 
but I'm joking. But anyway, we're gonna have some gizzard, um, some it's quail really legs. No, I'm joking. I'm gonna go for the the tip of the tail. The tip of the tail. Ooh, look at that. Rob's just loves to come out yet. He's having fish and chips. That actually looks lovely. Nice. Typical. He, he, he orders anything that looks like testicles. That's what he's done all week. I can't show you any lower than that, but we've got a P with a view. Lovely. Oh. Good nice guys. You can buy him for your uh, koi to swim around the pond. Probably need to be about 55 cm to get that bad boy on. Ah, we're desperately trying to find a mob ride down here somewhere. The north exit from the Shinkansen is absolutely peeing down, but the boys are nailed. Obviously, I've got my number one koi rainproof jacket on. Thanks very much, Ryuki boy. Oh my god, that cake is amazing. We didn't have a massive walk around Tokyo, to be honest. <laughs> it took us all day to walk around the bloody station. I'm sure we've got all our cases in there, but uh, there it is. It's so goy. <laughs> well, then, guys, so we just got to Haneda Airport, and these are the check in desks which are closed at the moment. And there's our hotel. How good's that? Guys, cheeky little room for the night. Look how sexy that is. You can have a shower behind glass like an animal. Feel like someone from Long Leet, one of the chimpanzees. I don't know what that is, but yeah, it's a cool little thing. They're quite cheap, mate. Was it 9,000 yen for the night? It's what it is. Mm. Nice, Robbie. Right. Not the um, um, super size. Lovely. Oh, yes. Lead the way. Oh. So, look, we've just woken up for breakfast and look at the day in Tokyo. It was absolutely hoofing it down yesterday. In Moss Brothers. Or Moss Burger, sorry. <laughs> Moss Brothers. <laughs> I got the one that matters. But he has gone right overboard. Give it a spin, go on. Oh, it's a thing of beauty. Oh, yeah, mesmerizing. <laughs> Look how cool that is as well, guys. Like, like a weird castle and bridge up there. I'm sure there are many more of you trying to get some rest at some stage during this flight. If you wish to do so, can we kindly ask you to make sure that you keep your seatbelt fast and visible over your blanket? That means the cabin crew will not have to wake you up. Show you kindly turn during the flight and the seatbelt starts to become a little bit. When opening your overlookers, please take care of your was that for a flight? Yeah. <laughs> I've been delivered back to the truck by the Nash. Or the Nash. I the like Nash. Nash. Yes, boy. And we're home. I've just put my washer in. It is 20 past two in the morning. House is immaculate. These have just come out of the washing machine. Got all my dirty washing out. And Boo Boo is happy to see me. Good girl. Right, so uh, I've been away and obviously my sister lives next door and she's actually a painter decorator by trade. And uh, yeah, I've had a surprise when I've opened my bedroom door. Oh, she's decorated my bedroom. <laughs> With some coiler. She's cute. Oh, and she's done the top of that as well. That's wicked. So my sister's done all of this. Blessed cotton socks. Oh, little bit of sushi. And she's painted the box. My father made that box, by the way. And that's really cool. Bless her cotton socks. She's a good ninja. This needed a bit of a paint, to be honest. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> That's really cool. Oh, bless her. I've got some nice additions to come up here as well later on. Oh, she's a good girl. Just cleaned the window, guys. Bit green at the moment. I got a funny feeling the feeder is empty. So I might climb in quick, have a look. I'll fill it up with wolf when I pick them up from school. But there's small toes, are you? 
growing. That lag's almost done. Oh. I need to empty this pond now to um, do the last few bits and bobs to it, tidy up the cabling, explain everything about the electronic system because I need to go and pick up some fish this weekend coming. So um, I didn't want to really want to waste the water. So what I'm doing at the moment is, excuse this guys, I'm just about to go surfing with Wolf. Well, teaching, well, yeah, we'll see. But yeah, as you can see, we're running a really high dose of potassium permanganate through there. I've got some, um, I think I've got about 100 litres now of K1 in there, or about 75 to 100. Um, Steve from Cat and I, about a year and a half ago, donated a load of micro K1. So I've put that in there, and that now should get that going, because obviously I want to replace half of this with some uh, mature media from the other pond. So I've bypassed the pond now. Uh, I bypassed this, sorry. Let's, let's take this one out as well. So we don't get any problems when I'm away. Take that out as well. Leave that by there. So now this won't restrict or fill up. And then once this is all done, I'm gonna empty all of this out. Finalize the last bit of cabling, get all that tidy. Explain how that box works. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see how Oh no, hang on. What are you doing, big boy? I have muscles. I know you have muscles. You're a big boy. Do you want to go surfing? Yeah. Come on. Today, as well, is uh, I'm going through, I'm going through a treatment. I'm going through a treatment. Um, yesterday, I put um, a potassium permanganate mix in here. I stopped feeding for about four days and Today, obviously I woke up this morning, it was rusty brown. Um, I've put my own amount of PP in there. Um, and now this is another dose 24 hours later. Um, I'm not gonna put any treatments in after this PP. It's just two PPs. And then I'm gonna do a scrape on the fish and see if it's done the job. Because, I don't know, like treatments are so expensive and I'm gonna see if just PP will we'll do what it needs to do. And I'm absolutely sure it will. So um, I'm actually right on the edge of what I feel comfortable with at the moment in there, as in quantity wise of PP. Like I said, it's not, it's it's definitely not, not what, what recommended on the packet, but it's what I've been told by various breeders and friends in Japan how to do a treatment. So yeah, and I can't really disclose how much I've got in there because Every pond is different, guys. You, you just don't know how much you can get away with. Like what I can get away with because of my aeration and maybe my water makeup. So I've got my air bar on, my air curtain, I've got a bottom drain on here, I've got the vacuum showers going, and I've got that. So if you look at those, guys, I've got a Fujimac 300 and a 60 going flat out. That's a lot of oxygen saturation in that pond. So that's probably the reason why I can get away with what I'm doing. And obviously, I'm going to leave this open as well to get more air in there today. And we've got the net on because obviously when you're doing this, there is a massive pro uh, um, uh, potential for fish to jump. So whenever you do a treatment, make sure you've got some netting on or close the curtains or put a cover on because, yeah, they don't like it. If you've ever done a PP treatment, you get some that are calm and you get some that are mental. It's like that old film, you know, um, The Lost Boys. Vampires die different ways. Some go bonkers, some go quietly. Right then guys, excuse me, dirty camera. So uh, this is a really good run through now for about four or five hours. Still purple, obviously there's not a lot of, yeah, bio material in there to be honest. But I'm gonna empty this out now because I need to clean the insides of that. I need to actually rearrange some of the uh, mountain tree media. Um, they messaged me, they said, oh, actually, the best way to do it is to turn it upright. So I'm going to do that today. But the first things we're going to do is have a little look at this, guys. So what I've done is, I've, if you can see that, we've got a trickle in. The trickle in now is coming from the trickle out of the pond. Okay. So, yeah, so that 
is going to be filled up with the water that I don't want from the pond, which is going to make it mature water, if you know what I mean. Uh, that's going to probably take a few days to fill up, but uh, no rush. And as soon as it does get to height, it'll just go straight with the overflow. Slowly sorting the cabling out. I'm in no rush, really, because um, I'm doing the trickling. I've still got to sort out a little manifold for the air intake. Still got to sort out the Blue Guardian. And I've got the doser to go there as well with a small header tank, which I'm probably going to put down here for it to draw out of. Um, yeah, all of this is going to be tucked underneath the, um, the drum, by the way, so you're not really going to see it. But I'm just sorting everything out. Yeah, slow and steady. I'm in no rush, mate. It's going to be good. But what I do need to do is change the carbon in my big blue at the top pond. This is filling up slow and steady. I've needed to do for a while and I couldn't be bothered, but I got this new little tool from Finch Filtration. Oh, and I've got a little wine stop just to go with the top there. This is going to make it a lot easier to fill up that carbon, isn't it? If that even took me two minutes, I'd be surprised that we are quite full, <laughs> very full. <laughs> like literally it was two minutes and it was in. And that's about 25 kilos, I think, yeah. Just about get that last ball in. Take your little stop cocky thing off. This is like the little funnel on the top. That goes down there. That's probably enough. And then screw this on. Can't really do it one, to, to one handed, guys. So. Filling it up now with the hose and it will discharge a load of like, you know, dirt from the carbon. And uh, once that runs clear for about two or three minutes, back in here. So I run bone char as well in this. Comes from this inlet, outlet, and then it goes into the bone char. I'm not going to replace the bone char yet because it's not as old as that. And I'm not really convinced that I've got any metals in there. That's just a precaution. There we are then, guys. You can see how gross that is. Yeah. I only jet washed this bloody yesterday. Now I'm going to have to do it again. But yeah, you can see the colour of that water, guys. It doesn't take long to run clear. Just leave that run properly. A load of carbon there. I'm sure someone said that they wanted some carbon off me. My old carbon. For an exchange for some like water plants or something. If, if it's you, message me, but you'll have to come and get it. I don't know where they're coming from. Anyway, yeah, so today I've been working on the um, the grow one. The grow one is 99.9% .9 finished now. I've got a few things to do uh, this afternoon. I'm actually going surfing this afternoon. We're going to do like a night session. So I'm going about 8 o'clock, probably come out about 10. So it'll be dark when I come out, but that's not going to affect today's video. Um, yeah, so I've got a few things to do. I changed the carbon, like you've seen. I've done quite a bit to the grow on. I'm going to do a bit more to the grow on. I'm going to get my motorbike built up as well, because that's going to go in for a custom exhaust build um, this week. So I'll drop that down in the van this weekend. So I'll try to put the front end on, so it's like at least a rolling, a rolling frame. I've got to order two indicators for the bars at the end of the day. And then, then my mate Nicky is gonna take the bike down to his and do the electrics for me. Just gonna tidy him up, because I'm not very good with electrics. I'm good with things I can see, but not with electrics. Um, to that end of things, electrics as well. Gotta sort out the electrics on the pond. I need to go and get some zip ties from B&Q, just to zip tie those um, ready, so I can put those all back. Few cables need to be attached. Very, very limited. I could literally just put the, um, the grow on pond now and it would work, but, Almost done. I have filled the water up from the trickle in. I uh, don't know whether I'm going to keep that because that's got elements of PP in it from before. But um, I don't know, that old water, would it be better than tap water? It probably would, actually. So what I might do is start running the system. And if you can remember, I've got three or four small toes out from Koi Water Bomb. So I might well just put those in the system for the first week. And, uh, and see how they go. Right then, guys, <laughs> Wolf's had his toys in these for years. So what I've done now is I've um, verconed these two. This one is clean. It's just got some staining on it from whatever. Um, 
Yeah, the rest of that PP is slowly coming out, but it was a really good dose, do you know what I mean? I'm gonna do some pond parameters later on because uh, I've got a little bit of foaming on the top there. I've got salt in here today, to be honest. So when I come back from Japan, normally run salt constantly now, but I came back from Japan and I think they, they just needed a bit of a tonic. So um, I think they like mourn me when I'm away. So what I'm gonna do today now is, there's a few fish that I wanna check over, examine, for no particular reason whatsoever. I just wanna check their gills and all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a few that I need to take out to photograph, and there's a few I need to take out to measure to see where I'm gonna keep the temperature now before the National Koi Show, because there might be a few that I actually wanna keep, excuse me, there's a few I wanna keep maybe smaller, and there's also a couple of males in there. The females have got really good volume at the moment. The males could do with a little bit more volume. So to do that, I can drop the temperature down, still keep feeding, and the males will like pump up a bit. I don't know if you know that. And the females, might lose a little bit, but I'm not going to go down really a lot, but it's going to go down maybe a little. We'll see. But I don't know. The sun is proper bright at the moment. and It's getting really warm. So keeping the temperature under 24, 25 degrees is going to be reasonably hard. The only reason I want to check the gills is because for the last few days, they've been stretching their mouths uh, and sort of like kind of flashing, but just on their gills so probably the pp treatment has just irritated them a little bit but i just want to check the gills i want to you know what i mean I'm like i'm gonna put a little bit of sedate in the bowl in a minute only a little bit to calm them down to do some pictures um but we'll go from there i think i might set up my little photo booth as well so i can try to grab some nice pictures of the koi just with my phone for some decent ones you know ready for the national now i don't know which ones i'm going to take but I'd rather take them out now and photo them like six to eight weeks out from the show rather than take them out a few days before the show to stress them out and then to possibly rip fins. Do you know what I mean? So let's do it now because I've got time for the fins to repair and all that kind of stuff. Always thinking. Here we are then. Again, a bit of a temporary setup, guys, but we've got some really nice LED lights there, all sheltered, and we've got a nice clean bowl. So that should do the trick. I'm not sure. We'll see. Like I said, it's looks pretty good to me. Right guys, well you live and you learn. Quick product review. Colombo sedation. Don't get it, it's absolutely rubbish. Uh, it's rubbish. So I'm going to send off for some of the Kumasumi. I can't remember how to pronounce it. But that's the one I normally use. I just like ran out of it and I picked that up from somewhere and uh, yeah, it's absolutely tragic. So yeah, it's a bit Probably of a waste. do it next week. Yeah. Another good product review product. It's called Methylene Blue and uh, it's like an antibacterial thing so when you remove a scale or something like that you uh, just paint it on with a paintbrush, a little little art brush and uh, yeah that's what all, all of the breeders use pretty much in Japan especially the guys from Odakan so um, I picked that up from the Koi Wholesale. You can treat volumes of water with it but I don't really understand how to do that. That's just like localised paint it on and it's like it's, it's got like a blue stain it's good there we are then guys so i can't do much with that sedate but what i have done is put my little jump guard up you see lovely and um i just got the water cycling so as you can see it's the same height now the glass all the way around which is pretty neat stop anything jumping in there especially when you're netting boom they're gone gotta get this wire out Hook it across here somewhere. Uh, no real rush. I've got a cheeky little hole here that I might put it through. So, but um, I think I'm going to let this run a little bit and then maybe take this water out and just get some fresh water and fill it up quick. That'll fill up slowly on its own, and then I can just get like nice fresh water in there. But then yeah, guys, um, 
little bit of water left in there, but it's all good water from the, the trickle in. If you look at that, I've got the trickle in quite high at the moment from the other pond. So we've got this absolutely beautiful bilge pump. Quite on that. What? So we're going to plug it in here now, guys. And I'm going to take mature water out of the main pond. And there we go. So we'll just leave that fill up now. Uh, I'll plug all the electrics in. And then I think what I'll do then is change some media from these two ponds. Just a little bit. I'll take some out of that and I'll put the equivalent of that in there. Probably only about 25 litres or something like that just to get that going. And in here, I've got a lot of BSP. PSP, BSP, one of the two. Photo PSP. So let's just, I haven't really tidied this yet, but I really want to... On the phone was, with Kevin and uh, Kevin this morning said, if you want the toes eye for ne early next week or, or, well, late next week or early the week after, get the system up and running and just let it run. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to put some small, I've got a couple of small toes in the main pond, put those in there and just leave them do the work. They don't really owe me much money. One or two of them have lost their sumi. I've got a nice sank and I've got a nice shiro. The other two haven't gone to plan. So it's a perfect combination to go into there, isn't it? To get that bio going. And I'll just hand feed them a little bit. Or I might get the auto feed one. I don't know yet. The la Pff, Who knows? Hey, lordy, look at that for mature media. Obviously, it does get dyed a little bit with the process of PPing. But if you're talking about <laughs> dark media... Yeah, so you've got, you can see the fresh media and the dark media. So, I've had to stop, stop now siphoning water from the main pond. I must have taken about 10% of the main pond out to fill this up about half. So, just leave it there now. I'll leave this trickling slowly, get this system as just enough in you now to keep running. And then uh, maybe tomorrow I might siphon a little bit more out. Uh, otherwise, the drum is just going to keep triggering all the time. So, yeah, leave that go. Love. Here we are then, guys. So, um, that was the uh, last fresh bag that I had of media. So, you know, I've replaced pretty much what I've got. That'll take a few a few days or a week or so now to start and um, sink in. But leave it do its thing. I might start putting some PSB in this as well. I've got enough to do the two ponds, obviously, get this going. In fact, let's get it now. Oh, have I got my half tie? I've never seen this one before. So, Bacto Plus filter starter gel. So, we'll try that. And obviously, we've got this, which is the absolute nuts. So, I'll probably start putting like a capful a day in. Maybe a little bit more just for today. Maybe two capfuls, but just make it last. Um, I think I've got about five more in there. So, slow and steady. Keep building it up. Uh, it's no point putting all in the system at one go. Well, yeah, if you were a millionaire, crack on, isn't it? It's not going to harm the fish, but... Yeah, slow and steady. Give this a little bit of waxing. That'll do for today. I was going to strip off all the old wax, but nah, I haven't got time. Um, I'm doing pond stuff. So, uh, yeah, so uh, quite a lot of this has come out. It's like uh, obviously choked the skimmer off. So um, I'm actually whacking that straight in and in that, so um, I'm gonna put some dechlorinator in this now as well. I've got some really good Columbo stuff, let me show you. And it is really good. Oh, everywhere. Where is it? There it is. So this stuff is super good. It's a really, really good bit of kit, to be honest. Well, the air curtain's working. That's the first time that's been turned on. Absolutely gorgeous. And we've got really nice current coming through there as well. Oh, guys. And we're talking Japanesey, nice and easy. Oh, yes. I will attach it. The flow all comes this way, so I'll just attach it somewhere. But uh, that's not going anywhere. Guys, look at, the, look at the flow there. Gorgeous. Can you see it? That is a true treadmill. That is lovely. And then obviously when I get the backy shower going as well, 
I don't really like the noise, so what I'll probably end up doing, like uh, what Odakan does, is he just puts like a, he, he tapes like a fish bag there so, and just hangs it in the water so it doesn't make so much of a splash and a noise. Yeah, the water's a little bit coloured because I, uh, they had a little bit of old water there with PP in it, but um, that's fine. That'll clear up the next, uh, well, well, by tomorrow morning that should be pretty clear. Jump guard is cool, isn't it? Let's put, let's put the backy shell on as well. Well, there's not enough water in there yet. Let's have a little look at the drum. Yeah, there's not enough water there yet. So this is all not tumbling at all yet. So I'm hoping I haven't got too much media in there. So let's just see how that behaves. Obviously a lot of it still isn't sinking. So uh, we've still got, I've just bypassed the drum at the moment. That's why the water's not clearing really because there's no mechanical filtration at all. But um, I've plugged in the heater at 24 degrees. We haven't got this one going. I haven't put the UV on yet. I might actually put the UV on. Actually, I'll wait till this fills up a little bit. But anyway, um, that's the only pump that's working at the moment. Still got to sort out the pipe work, but oh, in the kidney. Uh, yeah, we still got to sort out some of that, but um, hey, all in good time. So guys, I am going to go to B&Q to get some zip ties later on, come down here with Wolf and play with this uh, electrics, but it looks like a bit crazy at the moment. But I've still got about two more boxes up there, which are up there, to get all the electrics done, but I'm just playing with it at the moment, and it is so good. Honestly, right, so I've got the control, the OWAS control box going on this. It is like... It's just so good. You can control everything off one app. So I can see how many times this, the drum is cycling. I can see what temperature it is. I can see how long the cycles are for. I can do extra cycles. I can put so much. It's just amazing. It's absolutely incredible. And then you've got the, um, uh, the 13,000 pumps, which are amazing. They're so ecolo ecological. Ecological? E ecological? E Econom economical that's the word i'm looking for but they're amazing like the backy shower at the moment i've got running at 20 percent, and i'll go through all the specs i think on the next video because i'm still playing with this because i've been to japan but i really want to make all of this tidy and go through how the whole pond works on the next video and how the app works and all that kind of stuff because it just blows me away it just blows me away now that i can go anywhere in the world press my awas control app just do whatever i want it's it's incredible like it's it's really exciting and it's just such an amazing piece of technology all of this all working so the drum and the two pumps now work in conjunction with each other and they bounce off each other perfectly obviously all the same brand top edge cutting technology it's amazing but let me let me just show you i'm going to just let me just change the setting of the, no, we'll do it all next time because I'm, I'm rushing now. So at the moment, I've got the two pumps pushing at 20%. That seems to be kind of nice for the drum. Now, what I can also do is, instead of actually having a manual purge for this, because I've got one four inch bottom drain, if I actually max out the two, the two pumps, it's almost a purge, so it literally just hammers through the drain, gets everything into the drum, and then that just goes straight to waste. Because I've tried that as well, and it works an absolute treat. Right, guys. I've just put a load of this on my lips, so hopefully I don't go to sleep. But, yeah, I got some of the Kumasumi stuff. Actually, hopefully Ryan's not watching. Kev sent me down a little bit. Cheers, bud. Sorry if I got into trouble. But, sorry, Ryan, they will. I'll have to tell you. Um, yeah, so get that off my lips it's a bit of a rubbish day here today it's kind of raining a little bit but what i've got to do is i've got to get one or two of the fish out because i want to take some pictures of them i want to document them uh there's one that's got a bit of a raised scale so i just want to, have to investigate that to make sure it's not dead if it is i'll take that out and uh, put some um methylene blue on it but I want to take the fish out to take pictures of them before the National, because I don't want to do it close to the National, because that's when I explained before something's going to happen. But the water's looking particularly clean today. I don't know why. 
I don't think my auto feeder is empty again, surely. I'll have to check. Let me check. No auto cleaner uh, feeder is still about half full, so that's good. One third full. Look what I bought today, though. I'm going to put this into the grow one. So the grow one's going really well, guys. I'm going to do a little bit of um, work on it later on. So I am feeding the koi slow and steady. There's a little excess there. I think they probably will come. They're still a little bit shy to come towards this side of the pond. But um, as you can see there now, the water's nice and clear. Uh, you can see the air curtain working there, an absolute treat. The koi seem to stay down in that area. So not amazing koi. They're all sakai, mind. But this one in the front that looks almost like a shiramuji, that was a shower that's lost all his Benny. The, uh, the shearer in the background actually is really nice. Uh, the Sankey is looking really nice. The uh, Kawaku has lost a bit of Benny on the head, look, you know. So, um, yeah, well, stress related probably, being stuck into a pond with, uh, yeah, Mahosa fish compared to them. System is just losing all this, like, like extra bit of chafe. Um, and we're currently sitting at 25 degrees on the button. So I was convinced, I'm going to try to sort out this all today, I was convinced that the, that that heater wasn't working, even though the light was coming on, because it was only going to 23 degrees, but I've had to turn around right up to about 30 or 32 degrees, just to sit it at 25. Ideally, I want to go down to 24 or 23, but um, it's there now, so I'm not going to play with it. I've just set up this, I put this on the wall here. I'm going to put the cable through to here so we can start using the auto feeder if I can remember how to use it, but idiot's guide in there, so it can't be that hard. Yeah, awesome. So when the fish was out, look, BBKKS membership, it's run out. I'm going to renew that tonight and then I'm going to put my name forward for the t-shirt. Yeah, boy, I'm so excited. But we've done a gill scrape uh, on the last show I had out because they are kind of flashing a little bit and I can't find anything on their bodies. So let's have a little look at their gills. Yeah, I can't find nothing on this at all. I'll try to do this with one hand, but you know, the gills look lovely and fresh and pink. Nothing wrong with those in there. Can't find any body flu, can't find anything at all. So I'm happy. So there we are then guys, this is the scale I was worried about. I have removed a bit of it and I've put the methylene blue right underneath the scale pocket and uh, just about to pop this beautiful thing back in the pond now. Oh my days, that's looking nice. 64 cm now. Remember, that was, I love it. There we are then guys, this is my little Sakazumi Kawaku that I picked up off the side of the road in Japan from Sakazumi. Um, it was like 15 or 16 cm. It's a chibi nisai. And uh, now it is at 31 cm. So we've got six weeks left to the national. That should be about 34 cm with my prediction. But we will see. We'll see what it does. It's very, uh, yeah, we'll see. It's got a nice little body on it. <laughs> right then, guys. I'm going to have to draw this video to an end, to be honest. So basically, um, I've come back from Japan. I've been fished out, not really. Just got bit. Oh, I actually did just get bit. Uh, I've been fished out. Um, I've had loads of bits and bobs go on. I've been spending loads of time with Wolf. I've been down the beach with him today now, teaching him how to sort of like um, cope with waves. Because I want to start him surfing, hopefully by the end of the year, but he needs to be able to sort of like get a mouthful of dirty seawater and cope with it first. Um, yes, I know he's not four yet. They start young in my family. But basically, we're gonna draw this video to an end. It's all over the place. It starts in Japan and finishes now. But I've had a drama. I came back from work yesterday and um, my pond was like empty, not totally empty, but it was like about six, seven inches like low. And, and I was thinking, what is going on? And I thought, oh no, my high pressure pump had broken. So I took it apart. Well, in fact, I done the bi I took the bypass off the back of the uh, Profi drum to start with, um, just so it run through the day, stop the auto feeder, you know, quick thinking, isn't it, you know? And I turned the trickle in up just to give it a, a refresh of water. So I worked all day on Saturday, came back then Saturday evening and um, investigated the, the, uh, the um, 
the problem a bit more and it turned out inside my high pressure pump you've got like a really hard plastic it's like that stuff that kind of snaps can't explain like bakelite or whatever i don't know if that's the right thing but that had snapped inside so i'd taken it out i'd ms 300 it basically and put it back in and it's held really well so i've been in contact with darren from absolute koi um half past eight in the morning one ring boom he's on it trust me if you ever buy anything from absolute koi the after sales that you'll get from darren and donna uh, and ben that works here is absolutely top notch mate um i can remember when i bought this drum is second hand bear in mind the drum is second hand when i bought the drum second hand the obviously the um uh, the high pressure pump went on it then. Like I wasn't using it for very long and it went, so I had to buy a new one. Uh, Darren actually offered to meet me halfway in between Swansea and where he is up in Redford. And I was like, no, you're, you're okay. Just send it down. That's the kind of aftermarket you get. Now I'm not saying he'd do that for everyone. He obviously fancies me, but, um, he shouldn't cause Don is bloody gorgeous. Sorry, Darren. And, um, yeah so it's working fine now but i have i'm gonna phone him up first thing tomorrow morning to cancel the order because i've already paid for the high pressure pump i think they're like 315 quid so hopefully i can order a, a, a separate part just that bit that goes inside because the high pressure pump is working fine um it's an absolutely beautiful day look at that i'm having a glass of wine i've been down pembrokeshire all day with wolf it takes about an hour to get down there we had about three or four hours on the beach lovely and then just a drive home so wolf's up there at the moment watching spider-man which gives me enough time just to wrap up this video i do need to talk a little bit about the matsue grow and show so we done a live with gaz the other day we haven't crossed the t's and dotted the i's quite yet on this matsue um uh grow and show however we do know the event is going to take part in its own vat at the national in exclusively koi the fish, so you can pick on a Saturday and a Sunday. There's 50 fish, and I think there's 25 or 30 tickets. I think there's, lo there's loads of fish anyway. High pressure pump, working. So the fish are 195 pounds, okay? Because we're doing it in the national, we've got no overheads, or the boys have got no overheads. I'm literally doing it to try to get good, cheap fish for you guys. But the winner of the Grow and Show, so the winner will be announced probably at some point in October. And Matsue is going to judge best quality overall. And the, the prize is going to be an amazing trophy. And also it's going to be a flight to Japan. So it's not the hotel, it's the flight to Japan. So if you wanted to go for two weeks, you can go for two weeks, but you're responsible for doing the hotel paying for the hotel hotel's not a lot it's like 40 pounds a night it's absolutely peanuts so if you want to come over for a week come over for a week 10 days 14 days i will be there we will be going to karaoke we will be so that the, the trip will be in february so i'll even take you snowboarding me you and kobayashi san snowboarding next day me you i don't know we get a variety of dealers come out so we can all just go to the karaoke bar and it'll be absolutely fantastic. There's no pressure for you to buy fish over there, but I know probably save up a little bit if you do win. You've got from October to February to save up some money or get a bank loan because the fish you'll see is absolutely bonkers. And you will be in the car with Atsushi, Ryan and myself, and we will have an absolute bat blast. You've seen the videos. It's not a lie. It's absolutely class over there. Um, yeah, um, so it's not 100 percent sorted out yet i'm not sure when the tickets are going to go on sale but you buy the tickets before the show and first come first serve through the doors on the saturday and the sunday i suggest probably come in the sunday if you can't attend and you want ryan kev or myself to choose for you or one of your friends that's going that's absolutely fine but we'll have to think about that because obviously there's going to be people that will come really early and queue up to be able to get the first pick so possibly we'll say that if you do buy a ticket online maybe we will start selecting for you sort of like at 12 p.m 
So it gives people that really is making the effort to get there early when the doors open. I think the doors open at 11 or 10. So when the, when they, when they if they're queuing there, so like from eight o'clock, it's not fair that then you pay six months before or two weeks before, and then I start picking for you before they even come. So I like to be fair. Yeah, I'm actually doing a giveaway as well, guys. What are you doing? I thought you were watching. You just put a new Spider-Man t-shirt on. Yeah. Right, okay. Hang on, let me just talk to the people, okay? Well, I'm just doing a video, yeah? So, I've actually got an amazing t-shirt. The last one, right, from Danichi Toyota. Now, you've seen it on a couple of videos ago that I got him to sign it before he came out and got absolutely paralytic. I had to carry him out of his Toyota, by the way. He wasn't driving. Someone else drove us back. And I carried him out of his Toyota across the street well across the parking lot anyway and then we found a uh <laughs> wolfie don't get wet now mate because you've got a new t-shirt on yeah i made it with water uh until we found a um yeah a not a push chair what do you call them a um a wheelchair and then we got into the room so i've got an amazing t-shirt it's a size large even if you're not a size large even if you're like a quadruple large because you're a real man or you're a real woman with nice boobs you just like it's good to have this t-shirt because it's a bit of history it's the last one of its kind and if you wanted to if you win this t-shirt then i'll actually go over and um yeah i'll get shigeru to sign it as well and his brother i can't remember what his brother's called because there's three brothers two of them that run the the farm up in um nagaoka no oji actually that is and uh, one down in Toyota, right? So I'll see if I can get the three brothers to sign it for you, if you want to. If you're just happy with Danichi Toyota, son, boom, it's yours. Um, I'll tell you the competition, the next video for that, because I want people to, it's gonna cost you, I think 17 pound 50 to sign up for the BKKS membership. I just wanna push that, because the more people that sign up for it, the more money they get, the better the show's gonna be next year, if you know what I mean. So everything I do, try, is to try to push Koi, the Koi shows and the Koi scene in the right direction. Yes, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. But actually, tomorrow evening, I'm traveling up to Redford to meet Ryan on Tuesday, spend the good majority of the day there and travel back on Tuesday with about 40 fish. And I'm dreading it because I've got the grow one up and running, but it's kind of virgin, there's four fish in there. What's your, what's your glasses, my boy? What's your glasses, Nat? He's a hell of a boy. Give me your glasses here, big boy. Okay, just leave, yeah, put them up on there. That's a good boy. Yeah, you've got to be careful with those, yeah? Um, and then, alternatively, it's putting a majority of them because the um, Nagami Kawaku are actually pretty jumbo now, so they might have to go into the main pond which I know, not from any fault from exclusively, I'm not worried that they haven't, got, I know I've never had a parasite from those, but I know it's a stress event. And when they go on, they're in there, the rest of the fish are gonna be freaked out. The new fish in there are gonna be freaked out. And I know I'm gonna have problems and it's like weeks before the show. So I really don't know what to do. I'm really, and I think I've got too many fish to go into the baby grow one. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, on that note, enjoy the weather, guys. The summer is here at last. The window is staying open actually all night tonight. Thumbs up, Wolf. Shoot the webs. Zip, 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 zip.